Okay, so shall we start? Yes. So, uh, welcome to Japan. And is this your first time to be in Japan? Uh, no, it's my fourth time. Fourth? Yeah, I've been here four times this, this time. Oh, so, really? Uh, yeah. Uh, actually, me and my wife got married in Tokyo. Oh, really? I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. So, uh, so, this is the first time as Overdrive. Yeah. yeah. Personally, you came here three times before. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's great. So, what is the impression about this country? I love it. That's why we come here so often. <laughs> no, the, the, really, I mean, Japan has always been, uh, for some reason, it's always been like a, like a dream up there for like European and Scandinavian bands. It's been like this exotic country where every band wants to go. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, I mean, even like all bands back in the 80s, oh, we like to play Japan. And I think it was because of the purpose made in Japan as well. Yeah, yes. that Made it more, and then live at Budokan, Cheap Tricks, and the uh, Eagle and Band, and uh, all those bands, and uh, and then, then uh, we finally thought that now we, we gotta go to Japan, and uh, it was when um, uh, Rubicon Music released uh, Let the Metal Do the Talking, the overdrive CD, that we thought, okay, so we will go here and uh, on vacation and also do some promotion at the same time, and we just fell in love with uh, with Japan totally. And, the people with the atmosphere and uh, everything, so uh, and we wanted to come here again and again. So, yeah, that is great. so okay, for this interview, uh, we'd like to talk about some history about the Swedish heavy metal because you have written the book about Swedish heavy metal history. Yeah. So, uh, okay, first of all, can you define the first heavy metal band from Sweden? Maybe it's difficult. But... Uh, well, usually what we say is the first the first band that was a real heavy heavy rock band was mm -hmm. November, mm -hmm. uh, and they released the first album in 1970. Oh, really? So yeah, 70. yeah. So we uh, we kind of say that the hard rock in Sweden started in 1970. Mm -hmm. The same as what's happened. Yeah, 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 so. yeah. And they were influenced by bands like uh, uh, Cream and Jimi Hendrix. Mm -hmm. And they took it a bit more further, like so. That they're kind of really similar to Mountain, mm -hmm. like heavy, uh, riffy, mm -hmm. hard rock. So, yeah, November is, is really the first, first really. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, um, how, how was the Swedish metal scene in the early '80s? Because I, I know of some bands from you guys, Heavy Lord, Axe Beach, mm -hmm. Gotham City. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and the Biscaya. There are many, but how, how was the scene? Back, back in the 80s, it was uh, when the uh, when the new wave of British heavy metal scene started in the late 70s in England. A lot of the bands in Sweden were, were very influenced by that scene as well. And in, in Sweden, we have um, uh, like music uh, associations and, and clubs where a band can rehearse and they arrange shows and stuff. And uh, uh, around. In the late late 70s, uh, like me and uh, the guitar, the, the singer and the bass player in Overdrive, we were in a band called Paradise. Mm -hmm. and we were more melodic, yeah, AOR kind of hard rock. And Kent and Shella were in uh, Ocean, who was more like a hard rock rock band. And then we started talking. We saw all these bands coming from from England, and said we want to start a heavy metal band. Mm -hmm. And so did a lot of, the, of other bands in Sweden as well. So suddenly there were like bands everywhere. And uh, and also there were some smaller labels like Pang Records uh, uh, where the band had to pay for the recording themselves but uh, they released a lot of like obscure stuff that is now obscure and um, there were like festivals and the uh, bands kept growing everywhere and uh, like I said I think the new wave of British heavy metal in England started what we call the first wave of Swedish heavy metal back in the, in the early 80s uh, as well. Who was the biggest influence from the world of British heavy metal, like Jews and Priest? For, for me, uh, or, or bands or, in yeah, general. Gen general. I, I think Iron Maiden was, have always Iron been Maiden. huge in Sweden. Uh, Def Leppard, mm. really good, really big. Um, also Tigers of Pantang. Mm. Uh, uh, Def Leppard. Oh, I said Def Leppard. Um, uh, Judas Priest, of course. The Judas Priest, I mean, they, they started already back in the yeah, 70s. And I, I, I started liking them when they recorded Rock and Roll and mm -hmm. Sunday's Destiny. So, but um, I made this always been huge in Sweden. How about you personally? Me personally. Uh, the British heavy metal bands. I uh, I like a lot of the bit more obscure uh, stuff. James and Raid, uh, Oxim, uh, uh, Bastille. Uh, which find the general uh, and 
lo love those bands. Angel Witch is one of my oh, yeah. favorite bands. Just, I love one it. of the greatest bands ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks so too. And Witchfind. Witchfind is. Yeah, good. yeah. But I'm, I'm, I grew up more with the early 70s mm hard -hmm. rock as well. I love a lot of the Japanese early stuff as well. So. Do you prefer some occultic stuff like, like in the past? Like yeah, that? heavy, yeah. Uh, like doomy, mm -hmm. uh, but also heavy riffs. I like, I love riffs. Mm -hmm. Okay, then the bands like you know, you grew up in Ingvay Malmsteen, maybe to 24, made some commercial success in the 80s. Mm -hmm. So, was heavy metal mainstream music in Sweden back then? At first, it wasn't. Then, um, what happened was that Europe uh, they entered the um, uh, rock like, competition mm -hmm. and they won mm -hmm. uh, against every, all odds. Hard rock was not, uh, hard rock and heavy metal was very underground. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly a hard rock band won the Rock SM, uh, the Swedish Mastership of Rock. And suddenly it was like, okay, so hard rock is okay. Uh, because you could never hear hard rock on radio or anything. And then they won and then the, they released the first album. And then suddenly it went more like commercial. Uh, and also uh, I think that, that also made, it paved the way for a lot of other bands as well. And now all, when they won, and they saw that, oh, this could be a success. All the other labels wanted hard rock bands as well. So uh, Epic Records, uh, or Sony, uh, they were actually uh, debating over two bands, which to sign. Mm -hmm. It was 220 Volt mm -hmm. and Overdrive. Oh. <laughs> and they chose Overdrive. Uh, sorry, they, they chose uh, 220 Volt, and uh, we got a deal with Planet Records. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there was the Fingerprints record, who, Switch and Torch and uh, there were Tandem records. Yeah. A lot of record labels mm -hmm. uh, had sub labels only concentrating on heavy metal mm -hmm. and uh, hard rock. So then it then it became kind of a bit more uh, mainstream. yeah mainstream. Yes. Okay. So uh, after that, the worldwide thrash metal boom came. Mm -hmm. But it, it's a bit strange. I always feel it's, it's very very strange, you know, in the Swedish scene because in the early eighties th there were many heavy metal bands. And in, in the nineties there are so many death metal bands. Yeah. But in the late eighties I did not see so many, you know, thrash metal bands from no. Sweden. There are actually there aren't that many. There are uh, Agony mm. was one, yes. uh, Manini Blade. Mm. Uh, you had Bathory. Yeah, but, yeah. but, but Bathory was I mean they were the first death black metal mm. band. Yes. Uh, and uh, before that, I mean, Agony were, were pretty, pretty early. Uh, they started as a hardcore band. Yeah, yeah, Ag Agony, um, yeah, which is Agony yeah. in, in Swedish. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they uh, started kind of learning to play a bit better, mm -hmm. and then they became a, a thrash band. Mm -hmm. Midas Touch was also oh, yeah, there Midas as well. Touch. So there, there were a few, but not that many actually. There were not really any speed metal bands in mm -hmm. Sweden either. Uh, yeah, I think it's very strange. Do, do, yeah, I think so too. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> because, I mean, there's a lot of the speed metal or thrash metal bands were very popular in Sweden. Like early uh, Metallica, for instance, mm -hmm. were, were popular. And, uh, uh, yeah, Death uh, Angel and, and those kinds of bands as mm -hmm. well. But uh, I don't know why it didn't really catch on. Mm -hmm. I have, there, there are some demo bands yeah. that never made it on record. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't know why it never caught on in, in Sweden. Probably in the late 80s, Camp Moss was the strongest band. Yeah, I'd say they were. Mm. Yeah, yeah, they were, they were really big back then. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Then after that came the, the death metal boom with mm. Nihilist. Um, how, how do you how did you see it? it I think it, as as a Japanese, it, I felt it was in a sudden explosion. Mm. You know, as I said, there there were not many thrash metal, but such metal bands, but after that, all of a sudden, so many that metal bands you know, came out of Sweden. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what was it? I think it was there were there were like um, uh, there were starting small scenes a bit everywhere. I think a lot of the bands were, or musicians as well, were punk musicians that mm. have, uh, have started to learn to play better, and then they wanted to play heavy metal, but they thought that the the like. Uh, hair metal bands and the new wave of which heavy metal was a bit too commercial or too melodic so they wanted to be a bit heavier and uh, I think they, they were influenced by a lot of the uh, like early American bands as well and uh, it seems like there were some bands in Gothenburg, some bands in Stockholm that kind of started at the same time, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, like Nihilist and uh, Battery and 
in Stockholm there. And then when, when they, around that time as well, tape trading was, yes. was really big. Yeah, I was in the tape trading. Yeah, so. me too. So, <laughs> so I think that um, when those tapes started getting around and people started listening, oh, what the hell is this? Oh, we want to try to play that style as well. Mm -hmm. I think that, that also, because a lot of the tape traders were into like really heavy stuff as well, and, uh, the death metal and so I think they, they try to uh, evolve and, and uh, become heavier. Everybody wanted to be heavier and more angry, more evil. Uh, so th I think that's that's kind of how the death metal scene started growing really really fast around that time. I've read that the hardcore punk was the biggest route to Swedish death metal. Yeah, yeah. Most of the bands started as hardcore bands, then became death metal. Yeah, the yeah, punk, punk was really big. I mean, back in in the late 70s, uh, there were like uh, punks against the metal fans, uh, or hard rock or metal, metal fans. Uh, and then they come, come, they came, the disco came. So it was punks and metal against disco. <laughs>